Okay, um, I believe we have started yung live stream natin. So let me just uh, um, welcome everyone to uh, our uh, discussion for this evening dito sa ating live stream. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. So as I was saying, um, where was I? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so as, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, this is a long delayed live stream that we should have done last uh, around Tuesday of last uh, of the, the, the previous week where we should have talked about the Miss Universe Philippines candidates and um, who are the ladies that we should be watching out for in terms of um, the maybe 15 uh, candidates that we should pay uh, attention to. <clears throat> However, because of some very um, last minute updates that happened with regards to uh, the feud between uh, Paula Sugart and Kun An, we had to make adjustments in terms of our schedule. And now we are finally uh, discussing the topic that we should have discussed last uh, Tuesday. Okay, so um, let's uh, no, welcome everybody muna to our live stream. Um, this is actually our uh, regular na scheduled na Saturday evening live stream where we discuss topics on pageantry, uh, people, and um, uh, events uh, with regards to the industry. And um, in this uh, discussion, we are going to be tackling and talking about uh, 15 ladies who essentially are the ladies in our list that we should be looking out for in terms of the competition uh, as the Miss Universe uh, Philippines have officially kicked off last Sunday. Uh, and I think that um, in, in order for us to have a very um, structured discussion, we are going to be discussing 15 ladies and then we are going to um, batch them into five, uh, into three batches of five uh, candidates each and then uh, we will pause for some of your questions before we move to the next five and uh, the next five, okay? So that way there is a much more organized flow in our uh, discussion for this evening. So, welcome everyone to our live stream. This is Justin Cappuccino, Sashes and Scripts, and we are going to be uh, discussing 15 ladies from the 50 plus candidates who were presented at the Miss Universe uh, Philippines press presentation last uh, Sunday, uh, February 18. Okay, so um, in terms of the 15 ladies that we've uh, listed, please uh, take note uh, that yung listahan natin is a personal list it's not necessarily the front runners uh, list that uh, we've created because um, there's more to it before we can uh, name these ladies as front runners and there are more likely uh, instances na malalagasan or madadagdagan yung listahan or magbabago yung rango ng mga nasa listahan natin but so far um, what we've done for our uh, list for this evening is that we looked at the ladies um, and then we're going to present them to you, um, tell you yung mga things that they no longer necessarily post on social media with regards to the candidates in terms of their age, in terms of their heights, uh, in terms of their um, uh, educational backgrounds and their um, professions. So that way we have a more, you know, um, better understanding on the physicality and on the uh, backgrounds of uh, the ladies that are competing and that are uh, on our list. So, uh, for those na are already, who are already here, medyo magtataka kayo na iba yung presentation ng ating discussion ngayon. Medyo uh, na iba dahil we are trying the new format by uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube Live rather, na uh, portrait yung orientation of instead of the usual na landscape yung uh, presentation niya. So, I do hope na hindi kayo masyado na ano, na tawag ito, na, na naninibago <laughs> dito sa um, portrait and landscape na, sorry, portrait na orientation ng ating live stream ngayon. Okay? So, um, welcome to everyone who's, uh, who's here now. Uh, ben, yes, um, let's discuss that in a bit. Uh, let me just uh, make some uh, Certain uh, certain announcements first uh, with regards to those our list um, because I want to make the list a little bit more. Tawo ito. Uh, mas madisyang maintindihan uh, in essence because what I wanted in this list is that I am just going to present you 
the ladies in terms of their heights, their ages, uh, their educational background, and their professions, uh, if available. And then, um, later na, probably yung discussion on their um, advocacies and uh, more in-depth look at their backgrounds. Because as of the moment, there is still very threadbare information that's available uh, in terms of all 55, um, I think 54 na lang, or yeah, 55 or 54 candidates of uh, Miss Universe Philippines uh, this year. So this is not yet an in-depth na discussion in terms of who they are, what are their backgrounds, but this is more of like a get to know the candidates uh, in terms of uh, who they are. Uh, where they came from and uh, what's their uh, profession and educational na mga backgrounds. Okay, so um, then let's uh, let's uh, start your um, let's start yung ano, discussion muna with your mga comments here. Sabi niya, um, honestly, there's way too many goddesses in this year's uh, edition. It's driving us nuts. I agree. Um, Sir Jess, medyo nitpicking po ito ha. The MUPH sashes look way too wide and distracting. Ang hirap pagkita yung part ng region kasi sa paw ng MUPH logo. The sashes used from 2020 to 2023 were way better. I agree, pero I think um, they wanted to make it like uniform for uh, the candidates na mas visible yung uh, branding. Maybe that is a direction that they are um, heading towards too. They want it to make it more about the NUPH branding rather than, you know, um, the aesthetics na or the readability ng mga sashes. Um, I think it has something to do with uh, branding uh, more than anything. Okay. Um nasaan ba to? Uh, sabi, okay, continue ni 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 ni, uh, ni Ben uh, sa mga comments is it's also overwhelming na may mga MUPH girls from abroad. Um, are they aware of the residency requirements? Baka mamaya ay ma-technical sila. There is a possibility na baka yung residency requirements na bago or nagkaroon ng mga changes kasi siguro they are not um, may mga candidates na walang 6 month residency dito okay uh, so perhaps that's you know um, that's one of the changes that was instituted for uh, the competition this year um, we're not yet aware kung ano yung tawag ito yung mga residency requirements nila baka nga naman may tinanggal or um, in order for more candidates to be able to participate at uh, MUPH this year, eh, siguro they made some adjustments to the residency requirements so that there are more uh, girls who can participate at Hindi Ma Technical because of the um, residency requirements. Okay, so um, I think we should start beginning and uh, start and begin with our. 15 girls and we will first you know um refer, first um discuss the first five uh our number 15 to number 11 but before that i have made a poll uh, where you are i'm asking everyone to give their you know perspective or their choices um on who is their favorite for the miss universe uh, philippines crown for 2024 um, unfortunately we only have four uh four spots so it's up to you kung ano na lang yung pipiliin nyo doon sa mga four girls who are listed in uh, the uh, in the options. Okay, the first option is Crystalline Magari. Uh, the second is uh, MUPH Bacoor, Victoria Velasquez Vincent, a returnee from uh, Miss Universe Philippines in, I think, 2021. Um, and then we have Atisa Manalo on the third option. And um, fourth option, if wala sila, sila sa listahan ng mga nabanggit, um, you have a none of the above na option there. So, if in case that um, you want to mention Stacy, Alexi, uh, and several other, you know, uh, candidates, uh, ladies in the in the roster of candidates na wala doon sa listahan, um, pili na lang, piliin niya na lang yung none of the above na option because that's the, how do you call this? That's the... Um, that's the option lang na available with uh, the YouTube uh, poll, live uh, polling. Uh, na hanggang apat lang ang binibigyan lang options para sa atin. Okay? So, um, let's begin with the uh, list with 
Uh, at number 15 is a Binibining Pilipinas and a Mutianang Pilipinas alum. Uh, she is MUPH Pampanga, Cyril Payumo. Cyril Payumo is one of the most easily recognizable na mga candidates in this year's uh, Miss Universe Philippines because she is a pageant veteran of a lot of uh, national competitions. Nagmutya na siya. Uh, where uh, she won one of the titles and competed abroad. Uh, she also competed at uh, Binibining Pilipinas uh, a couple of years back. And now, she competed at NUPH Pampanga and won the title to represent uh, the title and the honor to represent Pampanga in NUPH this year. Um, she's 20, 27 years old. She stands 5, five foot 11, one of the tallest candidates in the Miss Universe Philippines, if not uh, one, uh, one of the two tallest candidates um, in the MUPH na roster of candidates this year. She is a BS Tourism uh, and Travel Services Management graduate. So um, I think there is a lot of expectation that um, that uh, that Cyril is going to perform well in the competition this year because um, marami na siyang napatunayan in terms of uh, in terms of national budgets. Um, I think that um, Cyril um, was one of the biggest overlooked na candidates in Binibining Pilipinas uh, um, a couple of years back uh, when she competed at Binibining Pilipinas. It's so difficult to select and uh, trim down a list into a top um, top 13 lang when there are a lot of very strong candidates during her Binibining Pilipinas batch. So I am expecting that hopefully this year um, Cyril is going to be one of those candidates na hindi ma-overlook in the competition. At number 14 is another um, pageant veteran. Um, she is a former uh, Miss Philippines USA first runner-up. Uh, I think she won in 2023. And I think she is one of those girls na madaling um, ma-overlook, um, especially during the uh, the press presentation last Sunday. I think um, a lot of uh, candidates were uh, severely overlooked. But I think um, Washington's, MUPH Washington's um, Kiara Landon uh, is one of those girls that we should be paying attention to. I haven't seen an, in, any interviews on, of some of the girls yet, so I cannot um, gauge their speaking abilities. So I'm waiting for uh, more opportunities uh, to see the girls speak in public um, so that we can uh, see and uh, we can judge whether or not they are uh, strong speakers. But um, knowing that um, uh, Kiara is a uh, is US based and US educated, uh, I am expecting that she can communicate well, especially that English um, is a language that she's very familiar with. Now, um, in terms of her background, uh, she has an associate's degree in Bellevue College and a bachelor's uh, degree from the University of Washington Tacoma on nursing. Um, she's also, you know, um, a pageant veteran, as I ever mentioned earlier. And uh, when she competed at Miss Philippines USA, I think she won both the Best in uh, Swimsuit and Best in Evening Gown na Special Awards. She's 23 years old and she stands 5 foot 6. Another girl um, that I think we should be looking at, um, that we should be focusing on, is uh, Leite, uh, Miss Universe Philippines Leite. And, uh, her name is, Ange uh, is Angel Rose uh, Campo Tambal. She is a licensed civil engineer, so medyo mabigat-bigat din yung kanyang um, credentials when it comes to her educational uh, background. And um, she is a working, you know, uh, civil engineer. And aside from that, she's also currently taking up her, um, I think, her master's degree at the Eastern Visayas State University on civil engineering as well. She's she's um, 24 years old. I haven't seen uh, yet um, a tawag ito, a, 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 I haven't researched a uh, um, kung ano yung uh, actual na height niya, but I believe she's between five foot seven to uh, five foot six to five foot seven. Um, but I will have to get back on you on that on her actual na um, published na height. Okay. Um, what I like about her is that aside from the fact that she is 
one of those girls na nakipagkumpitensya at the regional level, um, at the local level, before siya mag-nationals, um, makikita mo na meron siyang, you know, meron siyang drive to compete. And I think that's very important, especially in ako, in this, you know, edition where uh, ang mga uh, affiliated partners ng uh, Miss Universe Philippines, um, they say is, this is the last year that um, they can do appointments and moving forward next year, um, most of their uh, uh, representatives um, should be picked via casting or via a competition. So uh, the mere fact that Angel Rose, um, just like uh, Cyril Payumo, uh, competed at the regional levels, this gives me you know, more confidence that there is a strong indication that these girls are go going to give it all come nationals. Okay. Um, at number 12, we have a Bulacena. Um, she is MUPH Bulacan uh, Chelsea Manalo, and she is a tawo ito. Uh, she is a model and a cyberbullying advocate who is a Mercator and um, Empire talent. So she's not, you know, very tawo ito. She's not very um, very new uh, in terms of hindi siya bago in terms of yung association niya with uh, Mercator and Empire so she knows how, um, how people and how the modeling industry work and uh, the beauty of this is because uh, of that uh, because of the fact that she is a Mercator talent so alam niya kung paano maglaro dun sa, in, dun sa mga tao sa loob ng organization because um, she probably has in one time you know met some of these people and that is a very important na skill set that you are able to you know um, work your way around uh, these people so uh, mas ano mas kampante ka na uh, there's more confidence there there's more um, I don't know there, there's more um, ease of feeling because uh, you've already met with these people so you know how uh, things work uh, from within the inside um, she is um, 22 years old and she stands five foot seven inches tall. So, um, what I like, you know, about Chelsea Manalo is that her skin tone is one of those morena, um, darker. She's one of the darker skin candidates this year that I think should be given more importance in the competition, or so give it should be given um, extra spotlight from pageant content creators uh, like myself, para ma-push naman ng um, visibility uh, in terms of uh, women of color and women of um, uh, that are out of uh, that are outside of the box in terms of ano yung perception ng Filipino when it comes to what is beautiful and who is beautiful. Okay, at number 11, because medyo marami ito, um, is one of the most well-rounded ladies um, in the competition because uh, she has been a tawag ito, a, a binibining Pilipinas alum and uh, she has competed at um, uh, Century, Tina, uh, Century Tuna Superbuds uh, competition um, I think uh, a couple of years back and uh, she is a mother of two mar uh, happily married and she is representing passing. Okay, her name is uh, Selena Antonio Reyes. But for a lot of uh, you know more older na mga Bajan fans, um, they would remember ha her as Selena Alexis Antonio. And uh, she competed uh, during the batch of Venus Ra in 2010 at Binibining Pilipinas. And she is now coming back into the competition at age 38 years old. She's around five foot seven, five foot eight uh, inches in height. Uh, she is, you know, uh, an ABS education graduate from Assumption College, and after her stint at pageants, after you know, um, after uh, her studies, she actually became an educator, and she's still an educator um, and a business owner as well as a health and wellness advocate. As you can see, naman among the candidates, uh, she's one of those uh, candidates na medyo pag uh, bimihisan mo ng swimsuit uh, makikitaan mo ng abs uh, pagdating sa ano pagdating sa rampahan so i think you know um, yung um, ability niya to reinvent herself is going to be one of those things that's going to be an asset uh, i think that kinakailangan natin siyang uh, bantayan because um, 
with her, you know, with her experience and with the maturity that she's going to be bringing into the competition, we might be seeing another scenario where, much like um, the scenario with uh, the Philippines and Venezuela in uh, Miss International, we might be crowning a possible mother in uh, Miss Universe Philippines this year. As you know naman that um, when we crowned a Morena uh, for our Miss International representative, um, Venezuela crowned a Morena uh, girl for uh, Miss International. So, baka naman uh, it might follow that in Miss Universe Philippines this year, since Venezuela is sending a mother um, in uh, for uh, for Miss Universe in uh, Mexico uh, later this November, we might follow suit. So let's wait and see on the developments of that story. Okay. Um, so let's go on your comments because uh, na una nating nabanggit yung unang lima. Okay. Uh, let's start again with Ben Hernandez. Sabi niya, um, aesthetic wise, sige po, let's uh, forgo that in lieu of branding, sana ay may hindi uh, uh, oh, okay, ulit, ulit, ulit. Aesthetic wise, sige po. Let's forego that in lieu of branding. Pero sana ay hindi nila yan suot-suot kapag swimsuit and evening gown rounds, just like in MU. Sa Q&A, etc. na lang ulit nila gamitin uh, ito na isuot. Um, I kind of agree because the, the, what do you call this, the sashes are quite a bit wide. But prob more probably that when it comes to the competition later on, um, the actual competition later on, we might be seeing them without the actual sash. But for public appearances, um, so that it's easier to identify the girls uh, in a lineup, siguro they made it uh, those sashes quite wide and big in fonts so that kahit malayo, um, nakikita yung, uh, ito, yung mga sashes nila and yung mga text doon sa sash nila. Okay, um... Ben Hernandez continues with um, Christy McGarry's high ponytail is very much reminiscent of Madonna's iconic hairdo from 1990 Blonde Ambition World Tour. Um, I kind of think that yung styling niya was one of her best styling so far. Um, I think ponytail naman talaga yung tawag ito, yung isa sa mga trademark na look ni Christy because when she competed at Miss Intercontinental in uh, 2015 uh, I think naka high ponytail siya uh, in that competition so in terms I think of yung ability to you know to, to style herself uh, we're not gonna be very much uh, worried because she has a very heavy na team be, uh, rallying behind her okay um EJ David says, uh, Sims at competition returns to Miss World Pageant. I, I'm not surprised. Uh, I am thinking that they need this to survive uh, para magkaroon naman din ng sort of excitement for uh, Miss World. But I don't think that yung tagal ng ano nila, tagal ng hindi nila ginamit, hindi, hindi, hindi sila nagkaroon ng Sims at competition. Um, I don't think that it's gonna bring back the enthusiasm uh, of a lot of people to follow the pageant. So, unless there is a better way to score the candidates in terms of their performances where it's more transparent who is judging them, how they are judged, how they are earning those points, parang ang hirap niyang ipush. But I think Miss World needs to reinvent itself continuously because they are becoming less and less uh, relevant in uh, in pageants uh, simply because of people starts uh, people's interest with uh, Miss World have already waned uh, to the point that it, it kind of is difficult to um, be excited with a pageant uh, after multiple postponements and multiple um, how to say this, multiple years of waiting for the uh, the competition to commence. Okay? Um, Michelle A. Ot uh, Ogati says, Miss Leite, uh, gusto ni the sovereign. Yes. I've seen, you know, uh, some clips on, uh, I think, reels or in uh, YouTube shorts about sovereign, um, talking about uh, Leite. 
uh, and namanggit ko din naman siya kanina doon sa ating unang lima na ladies that, to, that we should be looking out for. And for me, aside from being a very clean yung kanyang uh, styling during the press presentation, I think the mere fact that she is one of the more um, accomplished in terms of educational achievement uh, makes her one of the girls that we really should be looking out for uh, because of not only the credentials but because of she's new, she's fresh, she's, you know, um, bago. Uh, she's a newbie uh, at the nationals uh, in terms of um, exposure so there's quite an interest with her um, uh, on that so far okay um, so let's continue with the next 10 kasi I think moving forward ito na yung mga girls na unti-unti tayong magpapatayan um, the girls who are comprising the 10 uh, would probably the girls that would have a lot of buzz surrounding them because there's a lot of fans who are advocating for these girls. Now, at number 10, um, we have Quezon City's Lorraine Ojimba. Um, she's also a uh, one of the darker-skinned ladies. She's actually uh, Filipina, Nigerian. Um, her uh, mom is Filipina. Her dad is Nigerian. And she is a multi-hyphenate. Um, she's a model. She's a writer. And then she's also a singer. Um, she is a communications uh, degree holder from the New Era University and she is 25 years old so she's still quite young but not you know uh, not uh, too young that she doesn't have anything to you know to show up for in terms of educational and uh, and uh, educational na background um, she's uh, wait lang she's Okay, she's five foot ten, which is one of the taller candidates, and it has been so, you know, so ripe. The Philippines has been so ripe to start crowning a woman of color. Uh, a, 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 uh, it's about time, I believe, that we should be crowning a black Filipina Miss Universe Philippines. And there are three in my lists that are actually, you know, um, that can take that uh, list, um, can take that box. Um, nabanggit ko na kanina si Bulacan, uh, Chelsea uh, Manalo. And then uh, mamaya, babanggitin ko pa yung isa na I think lahat tayo uh, mesmerized when she first came into the picture. Okay? Now, but going back to uh, uh, Lorraine uh, or Rain uh, Ojimba, you're probably thinking na we probably have seen her before. And I think for those who are followers ni uh, Leo Almodal, uh, Leo actually used her as uh, a model for his creations. And if you're going, if you're going to look at his Instagram uh, profile, you would see her um, in some of uh, Leo's mga you know pot couture na, mas uh, na masterpiece. In fact, um, yung gown that she wore during uh, Miss Universe Quezon City is actually a gown loaned to her by uh, Leo Almodal. So we are expecting that for her national costume and for her uh, evening gown competition at uh, MUPH uh, later, she will be dressed by uh, Leo Almodal. Okay, then uh, at number nine, we have uh, the representative from Philcom, uh, Philcom uh, United Kingdom, and her name is Christina Chalk. Um, Christina de la Cruz Chalk, okay? She actually is a uh, Miss Universe Great Britain runner-up in 2016 and 2018, if I'm not mistaken. She was first runner-up in both cases, so hindi siya naiiba when it comes to um, pageants and competition. Aside from that, I believe uh, she was a former... Miss Earth Scotland, if I'm not mistaken, because she's, she um, she traces her roots in Scotland. So she, I believe, is one of those girls that is easily overlooked. But if you look at her, um, she's one of the more facially pretty na mga girls in this competition. In fact, um, whenever I look at, um, at Christina, I am reminded of, you know, um, if, you, if you remember, si Bianca Araneta, uh, the one nakasama ni... 
I believe Charlene Gonzalez doon sa Dove Shampoo na commercial in the 90s. She reminds me of that, uh, of that model. Um, and she's one of the most, you know, alta na mga girls that we were hoping uh, to join Binibining Pilipinas uh, or join Miss Universe uh, during, you know, during the 90s. Okay? Um, now, uh, Christina is a pharmacology degree holder at Glasgow University in Scotland. And she has a very multi-hyphenate na career that's spanning fashion, real estate, um, and of course, uh, yung kanyang uh, degree in pharmacology. Um, she also established a multinational na uh, collective that is dedicated for women and mental health. So when it comes to her background, she is one of the more rounded, more accomplished na ladies in the competition. And I think that a lot of people are not yet very much aware of her, but over the next several, you know, several weeks leading to the competition later in, I believe, in around May, uh, May this year, um, she probably is one of the candidates who has a strong resume that we really need to pay attention to. Okay, then, um, of course, we have at number eight the very gorgeous, the very um, fresh and young na Miss, ba Miss Universe Philippines Baguio, uh, Tara Valencia. Okay? She is a cum laude who graduated uh, with a degree at um, degree in Tourism and Travel Service Management from the University of Baguio. She's 22 years old, so she's still quite young and fresh. Um, and she stands 5 foot 9 inches tall. During the press presentation, um, I would have ra wanted to rank her a little bit higher, but I think physical-wise, meron pang toning that needs to be done. And um, she still looks a little bit heavy on stage in terms of her, um, in terms of her pasarela. So there's still like, um, there's still some areas that needs to be worked on, that still needs to be polished on, that still needs to, um, I believe, uh, train on. Okay, um, but I think in terms of potential, there's a lot of potential that we can expect from Tara. And I think that in terms of her ability to speak um, based on uh, videos, uh, video interviews during her, uh, during the press presentation, marami pang pwedeng i-improve. There's still an, uh, um, quite much areas to improve on in terms of confidence. And I think um, with maybe around three months uh, before uh, the month of May for the uh, rumor na finals for uh, Miss Universe uh, Philippines, pwede pang ayusin, pwede pang linisin. Um, and I think kaya niyang, ano, kaya niyang gawin yun, uh, kaya niyang itrain yun. Okay, uh, at number seven is someone who's not, you know, um, not uh, amateur in pageant, someone who has actually been thought of as she should have been the first Filipina Mr. Miss Intercontinental in 2014, we have Cebu's uh, Chris Tiffany Hanson. Um, she's 34 years old, she stands 5 foot 8, and she is one of those, you know, um, Cebuana beauties that started the craze that uh, every year sa Binibining Pilipinas, there's always that one Cebuana who's gonna end up with a title at Binibining Pilipinas. And um, Chris is one of those more delicate looking uh, na girls. And despite being 34 years old, you do not see that in her face. She actually quite look young. She can pass off someone who is in her mid to late 20s. And I think that's good genes and good skin. Um, I think yung background niya as a deputy, deputy protocol officer for Cebu City as well as uh, being a sales marketing manager for um, Napsack uh, Dance Studio is going to help her in managing uh, her pace throughout the competition later on at uh, MUPH leading to the finals. Um, I think uh, Chris still needs to polish in terms of toning the body kasi um, may tawito may swimsuit competition tayo na hinihintay and uh, 
we need someone who is you know very physically fit um, in order to compete with the younger girls i think that in terms naman doon sa kanyang styling there is a need to diversify her um, her looks so that she is not stuck with just one look for you know um, daily na public appearances um, i think uh, chris stephanie um, being a very what do you call this be a very uh, youthful looking na, na candidate she can still pull off mga sultry na looks and i think she starts she needs to start exper uh, experimenting as early as now so that she's able to you know um find the right look for the preliminaries and the final competitions later on okay um number six is uh your uh former miss international first runner up uh, who's now uh, um, representing Quezon Province at MUPH 2024? We have Atisa Manalo. Atisa is 26 years old. Um, she's five foot eight, and she listed in her bio that uh, she's a entrepreneur and a uh, a businesswoman. Uh, for those who are not in the know, uh, I believe she is one of those co-owners of uh, Kumi, the Kumi franchise uh, here in the Philippines. And uh, she is an accountancy graduate. Um, Atisa is a polished performer, uh, but I feel I, but I feel that in terms of speaking ability, there's still you know areas na needs improvement uh, because some of the girls, especially uh, the girls that I have listed in my top three in this list, um, are stronger speakers, uh, stronger communicators than her. Okay. Now let's go back to our uh, comments and uh, in our poll. So currently, um, forty-one percent of you guys uh, feel that uh, Atisa Manalo uh, is the favorite to win. Um, mas marami sa inyo ang nagsasabi na ang favorite nila is si Atisa. Um, coming in at twenty-five percent is Christeline McGarry, and uh, Wala doon sa tatlong pagpipilian uh, ang, ang sabi nung 23% sa inyo ang gusto nilang manalo sa Miss Universe Philippines this year. And then, um, with 11%, you have Victoria Velasquez Vincent. Okay? So, um, let's continue yung ating uh, mga comments because uh, we have... Uh, Asa na ba to? Uh, si Daniel Alejandra uh, Lee says, Hi, new, new subscriber here. I love the three uh, women that are in the poll. Um, I love them as well. I think that uh, some of these ladies are going to be, you know, uh, the front runners uh, for the competition later on. And I think that if these ladies play the car their uh, cards right, um, one of them is going to be ending up with the title. Um, ben Hernandez says, Bianca Araneta was for Ivory Shampoo way back in 1994. Okay, so I stand corrected. It's not Dove Shampoo, it's Ivory Shampoo. Um, Kumakawai, si AJ Arlarcon. Uh, hello, AJ. Uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, I hope you're enjoying our live stream this evening. Um, Ana Maria Rebotido says, ang favorite niya is si Alexis. Okay, um, speaking of Alexis, Alexis is one of the ladies in our um, in our remaining five uh, na listahan. But, hold on muna kasi uh, si Alexis medyo mataas-taas yung ranggo niya doon sa ating top five. Okay? Um, okay. So, let's continue with our list kasi medyo mahaba-habang list and I am sure there will be some of you who wants to uh, make questions doon sa ranking nila. Okay? Uh, at number five is uh, the representative from Northern California um, Kayla Jean Carter. Kayla is actually a, a TV personality and a social media influencer. Um, she was at Netflix, you know, um, Too Hot to Handle na, na um, uh, TV show. Uh, she's 26 years old and she stands 5 foot 7. She is one of the more commercial uh, na faces in the competition. Um, and I do hope that in terms of yung kanyang styling um mapulido pa kasi i think there are there are still you know um there's still uh styling choices for her na mas bagay than her straight her hair 
uh, that was uh, that she supported at the press presentation last uh, last Sunday. And um, in terms naman doon sa uh, speaking ability niya, I'm still waiting for her uh, for more interviews uh, with her so that I can gauge yung depth and yung ability niya to, cons uh, to speak. Because um, definitely, because English is uh, a, a native language for her, um, confidence in speaking is already there. Uh, I am just looking now for more depth in the way that uh, she answers questions because the four girls um, that are above her in the list are definitely some of the strongest. If not, they are probably the strongest communicators among the entire MUPH batch, batch uh, of candidates. Um, because based on what I have seen um, seen in, uh, in them, uh, sa mga interviews ni pets nila on social media, uh, nakaka, ano, nakakawindang silang magsalita. They, they are literally... Uh, ladies who can eat up yung competition because of their ability to speak. And at number four, we have Iloilo's uh, Alexis Brooks um, in that list. I am amazed uh, because of her ability you know, to speak. Um, a lot of people are saying that she's a Zozibini uh, Bini clone, but I don't see that at all. Probably because of the hair, but other than that, I don't see anything that remote, uh, remotely reminds uh, me of her as a clone of Zozibini because, in fact, when she speaks, she speaks with so much convi uh, conviction. And there is, you know, um, there is that angst to prove herself uh, when, uh, whenever she speaks that is not, uh, that is uniquely hers, that I don't see in Zozibini. So, Maybe because of um, their skin tone, maybe because they're both black, maybe because, you know, of their hairstyle. Um, a lot of fans are saying that, but in terms of yung, yung, um, yung fire, in terms of yung, um, yung drive, uh, there are two different ladies. I, I feel that. And in terms uh, of yung kanyang um, background, um, because she's been bullied since she was a kid, Siguro doon nang gagaling yung hugot niya. Doon nang gagaling yung, um, how do you say this, nagagaling yung fire when she talks. And uh, I know that a lot of, you know, um, a lot of, you know, um, Atisa fans got offended when I said that um, Iloilo's Alexi Brooks is probably a better choice for uh, the Miss Universe Philippines crown. I still stand with what I said because I still believe that if we're going to look overall um, doon sa capacity to speak, um, to tell a story and tell their personal story, I think um, Alexi Brooks is, is still way above Patisa. And um, sabihin man natin na mas magaling magpasarela yung uh, ang iba than, uh, than uh, Alexi Brooks, but pasarela can be trained. Um, that's one of those areas of the competition that you just need, you know, hard work and dedication. You can improve your pasarela in months. And I think uh, Alexi, you know, uh, can have that. Uh, Alexi can improve on that. Now, um, in terms of her background, uh, she is a SEA Games athlete. She is actually a heptathlon athlete. Um, she is a sports empowerment advocate. And, and, and a current uh, business administration student um, at uh, the National University, um, which gives me a bigger or a better understanding of how can we package her for Miss Universe uh, later on if she is chosen as NUPH. I think her being, you know, um, a, a, a black Filipino, um, would be a good start off point in terms of packaging her in the international competition later. Uh, her story is rich. Uh, she came from poverty, she worked hard, um, and then she got a scholarship through uh, her athleticism uh, for, um, ito, uh, for college, uh, for university rather. That gives, you know, a lot of wins um, a lot of personal wins that can be packaged as this is 
one of the ways that one can be said to become a transformational leader. And um, in terms doon sa ability to speak, um, if you hear her speak, maraming nagkalat na mga videos on Facebook, on interviews with her, and you would really see, you know, the power and uh, the drive whenever she talks, uh, whenever she answers questions. So that is the reason why she is number four in our list. Now, at number three, um, she arguably is the best communicator in the entire batch. Um, and that is Kaintas uh, Stacy Gabriel. We all know Stacy from her Binibining Pilipinas stint. We all know that during her competition at Binibining Pilipinas, she was faced with a batch that has a very strong uh, set of candidates. That's not something that is a hindrance to her because she said that um, uh, with MUPH this year, you know, there's a lot of really strong candidates that she's going to, you know, face uh, and be sisters with uh, in the competition. And it has never, you know, uh, because uh, it, it was never a daunting task for her because um, ultimately she believes that her ultimate competition is not these ladies but herself. And that is the mindset of a Miss Universe winner. When we were invited um, to her sashing ceremony, we, you know, the press um, had a field day throwing uh, at her, you know, tough, difficult questions, and she navigated all of those, you know, questions with ease and with poise and with grace. Um, and that's not, you know, uh, surprising because um, Stacy is a. AB Communications graduate from the De La Salle uh, University. And um, aside from that, she is a host and she's an actress and she is an advocate for women's ministries and mental health, having had mental health struggles in the past. So in terms of yung, uh, her background, I think she really has her, you know, um, has her resume uh, beefed up. And I think that if isali mo si Stacy sa tawo ito sa tawo ito sa isang competition she's not gonna be daunted by the task because you know she's uh, only five foot five or five foot six inches tall but she might be uh, she might be short in stature but when it comes to the ability to inspire ability to communicate and engage she's one of the ladies na Top notch, ang, uh, top notch ang skills on uh, those level. So, yun yung ano, yun yung um, tawag ito, yun yung isa sa mga, tawag ito, isa sa mga reasons why um, Stacy is on the top four of our list. Now, at number, uh, at number two, we have Baco Ors Victoria Velasquez Vincent who is 28 years old this year. Um, I think she's turning 29 uh, later pa uh, in this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, she's five foot nine, so may katangkaran. She has one of those very commercial, uh, very alta na faces in the competition this year. She is Irish, Filipina, and uh, Irish, Kiwi, and Filipina. Okay, so I think tatlo yung kanyang heritage. Um, she is an ad, uh, she is an advocate for um, heritage and cultural preservation because she has a double master's degree on architecture and um, heritage conservation. So this is you know something that uh, we are very impressed with uh, uh, VVV uh, ever since she competed in 2021. Um, to be honest, actually. Uh, I think she was one of those girls that should have placed higher in the competition. Um, but again, judges' decision. Uh, that's how you know. That's just how you know um, uh, pageants are. Sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes you're not. But in terms of the candidates this year, I think she is the most how to say most level uh, uh, level strong. Um, in every aspect of the, uh, of the competition. Um, magaling naman din siyang magpasarela. She has a very facially, you know, stunning na tawang ito, na beauty, very commercial, um, very alta, uh, in fact. Um, very 
tawag ko, uh, she also communicates well. She also is quite tall. So, in terms of yung mga need natin na mga boxes to be ticked, I think Victoria um, ticks them all off. Uh, at hindi siya mahirap i-package for an international competition. So, I think it might be too uh, 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 presumptuous of me, but I think she is the best overall candidate um, among the uh, among the girls this year. Um, however, again, this is just a personal opinion at this point. And of course, at number one, we have the gigs Christy Lynn McGarry, who is 33 years old. Uh, some say she's turning 34 this year. Um, but as of now, uh, I believe she's still around 33 years old. She's again one of the tallest ladies in the competitions at 5 foot 11. And uh, she is a model, a DJ, and a host. And she is a um, graduate of advertising and promotions um, with a full academic scholar uh, at Pace University in New York. So in terms of, you know, in terms of the um, ability to speak, in terms of height and body proportions, um, I think Christy McGarry is one of those ladies on top. And when it comes din naman to her uh, communication skills, I think she speaks more with confidence and with maturity, um, more so than uh, some of the candidates na medyo kinakilangan pang hasain on their speaking skills. In terms of depth, uh, when it comes to interviews, I think Christy, you know, makikitaan mo ng maturity uh, from the time that she competed in 2015 uh, at Bini Pilipinas up until now. So, I guess, um, in terms of yung katawan, body proportion, modelless proportions, I think uh, Christy has that in, uh, you know, uh, pat down. And what I also like about Christy is she has a very morena na complexion. Uh, very kayumangging kaligatan na hindi mahirap i-package dito sa Pilipinas. And if you're going to send someone like her at Miss Universe in, um, in, in, in Mexico later this year, I think she would stand out because of her, you know, of her uh, very exotic na skin tone. And um, she would also stand out in interviews because of her ability, you know, to communicate. Okay? So, I think that's our top 15 uh, as of this uh, as of this moment um i know it's a bit controversial na doon sa top 5 ko wala yung favorite uh, candidate ng lahat um but then again this uh, list is more likely to change in the next several weeks uh, as we draw closer to the competition so to recap at number 1 i have christeline macari number 2 is victoria velasquez uh, vincent at number 3 i have stacy gabriel Number four is Alexis Brooks. Uh, number five is Kayla Jean Carter. Number six is uh, Quezon, C uh, Quezon Province's um, Atisa Manalo. Uh, number seven, uh, Christy, uh, Chris Tiffany Hanson of Cebu. Number eight is the young, the very fresh uh, Tara Valencia. At number nine is Chris, uh, Christina Chok. Uh, number ten is Lorraine Ojimba, another um, uh, another possible, you know, uh, underdog in the competition. At number 11, I have Selena Antonio, oh, sorry, atama, um, Selena Antonio Reyes. Uh, number 12 is Bulacan's Chelsea Manalo. Uh, late, uh, this Angel Rose Campo Tambal is at number 13. Kiara London is at number 14. And at number 15, we have Cyril Payumo. I know that there are a lot of girls na hindi ko pa napabanggit na I think I still need to keep an eye on. Talisi Cebu is one of those ladies. Um, and, uh, oh my God, I forgot. I think Washington. Uh, no, no, no. Washington's uh, nabanggit na. Um, there's one more. I think Florida. Uh, the, Phil, uh, the representative from the Philcom uh, in Florida um, is another lady na nakikita kong may potential as a you know, possible underdog in competition. So, a lot of these list, listahan na meron tayo, um, chak, magbabago yung ranking, uh, may matatanggal sa top 5, may mapapasok sa top 5, mababago yung order ng top 5. So, let's keep, you know, a level-headed when it, it comes to discussion um, 
of you know the the candidates kung wala sila sa listahan ng uh, mga bloggers and ng mga content creators that you follow don't take it personally because yung mga listahan na yan it's more likely going to change um, over the next several uh, several weeks and several days as we go into the competition kasi nasa umpisa pa lang tayo okay um Nasaan na ba tayo? Okay, so let's go back to yung mga comments. Um, Ana Maria Rebotido says ang favorite niya daw is si Alexis. I agree. Um, Alexis is a very strong competition uh, in this, you know, in this uh, in this edition of MUPH. I think kulang lang siya ng ano, ng tawag kulang lang siya ng uh, exposure. Uh, and kulang lang din siya ng um, training pa on the pasarela na side. So, I think Yung mga yun, kaya pang puliduhin, kaya pang ayusin. So, I'm not very much of concerned at this point kasi maaga pa lang sa competition. Um, JB, sabi niya, be, be a man, bro. TF, you talking about. Um, bitch, you are in a fashion, in, in a, in a uh, pageant na, tawag nito, pageant na channel. So, anong, anong TF, TF mo dyan? Uh, umayos ka kasi nakikipanood ka lang ng ano, nakikipanood ka lang ng tawag nito, ng channel ng iba okay uh, kung hindi mo gusto yung content namin dito, pwede kang lumayas okay uh, bye bye um, nasa na tayo, okay um Phileo Miss, sabi niya, experience is the greatest advantage of the comeback queens, especially those who have competed and represented the Philippines in international pageants. I think that's um, yes and no. Okay? Uh, yes, because of course, experience is important. Um, so, there is, you know, there is um, a wealth of understanding on how competitions go. Um, for Christy, for uh, Christy Fanny Hanson, for Atisa Manalo. But that does not give them, you know, um, an insight on the Miss Universe competition. Kasi, I would say that the Miss Universe competition is a much tougher ball game uh, as compared to Miss International. I think Miss International is a very relaxed na pageant um, as compared to Miss Universe. And I think um what uh what what uh, one of the disadvantages rather one of the disadvantages of uh the miss uh having a pageant international competition in your belt is that people will always you know assume that you can do better at the next competition because if not para saan pa yung nanalo ka before um, there is an added pressure um, for you to accomplish higher and better once na may international competition ka nang na, na, na pagdaanan. And I think um, that is one of those uh, scenarios na kung minsan nakaka, ano, nakaka, nakaka kaba or nakaka down sa mga girls. So I do hope that uh, for the ladies who are competing this, uh, you know, this year, wag nilang... Um, wag silang umasa that the international competitions that they have gone through in the past is going to help them in the competition because this is an entirely different ball game um, at the moment uh, ibang iba na ang Miss Universe na pinagdaanan natin five ten years ago as compared doon sa uh, pinagdadaanan ng mga sumasali sa Miss Universe you know starting at the tail end of the IMG era okay um, the pageant cafe by Sir Lemon uh, is asking, why is Alexei not included in the poll? Unfortunately, we only have four slots in the poll. In fact, as I was, you know, typing, you know, the the votes uh, and the options, I was hoping na sana kahit man lang lima para kahit paano ma tawag tawag, mailagay ko doon sa listahan yung top four na nasa listahan ko. Unfortunately, uh, that's not the case. So, um, pagpasensyahan nyo na lang yung listahan dahil uh, this is what, you know, what um, 
YouTube only allows us. Maybe in the future, in other polls na mas maraming options, um, I think doon pwede tayong mag-all up. Okay? Um, Okong Channel says, um, Good evening, Sir Jason. I love Alexi and Atisa. Pero sa press presentation, give natin kay Atisa. I agree. Um, nanlamon siya in terms of the presentation uh, uh, in the pasarela. Um, mas napansin ko pa si Quezon City o Jimba kesa kay Alexi noong press presentation. Again, as I said, I think that in terms of yung presentation and pasarela skills, um, Alexi still needs uh, polishing. Um, si Lorraine o Jimba, hindi ako nagtataka na mas tawag ito, mas pulido yung mga yung presentation niya because uh, she's been a model. And uh, the mere fact na tawag ito, na yung press presentation, patikim pa lang yun, um, I think there will be changes uh, dito sa mga candidates na sumasali sa MUPH um, come preliminaries. Okay? Um, GLDC, sabi niya, I respect all the gel to to all the delegates competing this year, but it would be very nice to see Christy McGarry take this one for the Filipinos. She could represent us proudly in Mexico, win or lose. I agree. And besides, I think that in terms of machinery behind Christy, she has a strong machinery because ang sumusuporta lang naman sa kanya, si Mark Bumgarner, si Raymond Gutierrez, and several other lesser uh, lesser popular na mga high performance na mga people. So, aabangan natin yung mga taong ito, yung mga taong yon na nasa likod niya rallying behind her. Plus, um, if you're not familiar with yung background ni Christy, Christy is actually a DJ who has had mga gigs uh, that are tied up with um, Dior and Armani, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I am not sure kung uh, tawag ito, kung ano yung mga iba pang mga mga gigs na she she handled in the past but in terms of yung kanyang ano in terms of um in terms of uh, her background hindi naman siya napapahuli hindi naman siya lagging behind and in fact um let me just pull out this tawag ito this uh Ito, this uh, article on her from um, Collective Hustle. Um, Christy is not only a model, um, she's also a DJ, she's also a host, and she's also a TV personality. Kasi, um, yung Metro Channel, she is hosting, uh, what program was that? Uh, let me scroll down. I think the title is Beached. Um, I think this is yung tawag to, yung program uh, where um, Rachel Peters uh, was hosting before. Okay? Um, and then she also is a fitness enthusiast. Um, I think nakapag marathon na rin siya. Uh, and may mga tawag to, may mga, ad, um, mga advocacy din siya that is related to fitness during the. Uh, COVID-19 na pandemic. I think uh, it's called Impact or something. I I, I wasn't just able to um, to list down all of those uh, achievements that she has. So, in terms of yung resume din naman ni Christy, hindi rin siya nalalayo in terms of yung wealth, in terms of gaano kasiksik yung kanyang pageant uh, CV. So, yung, kumbaga, hindi rin tayo mahihiya na ipadala si Christy should she win Miss Universe Philippines later on. Okay? Um, there's a comment here from uh, Sally Salen. Sabi niya, dati na rin may si Christy uh, at Mark Nielsen. Mark Nelson. I think that's beached um, uh, ng Metro, Metro Channel. So, so there. Uh, kumbaga naman, in terms of yung exposure, hindi rin naman super lagging behind si Christy. Um, in, in fact, uh, I think mas apt siya or mas fit siya for an international competition now as compared to when she you know competed in 2015 because she has all of these you know um all of these uh parang mga achievements under her belt na hindi lang kasi na masyadong um masyadong napapublish kaya hindi natin alam but in fact um i'm looking at her you know at her uh um 
mga brands that she DJed for. Um, we have Dior, Louis Vuitton, we have Michael Kors, we have Armani, we have Nike, and etc. So, alam mo yun yung parang matutuwa ka that in terms of should we crown Christy uh, nowadays as our representative for MUPH, there's so much, you know, there's so much altaness <laughs> that you can bring into the competition. Pretty much, if you go side by side comparison comparison between Michelle, uh, uh, between uh, Celeste, Michelle, and then Christy, hindi rin nalalayo si Christy doon sa, tawag ito, doon sa alta levels nung dalawang naunang girls. So, I think, um, Miss Universe Philippines this year is going to be a very, very exciting na competition because of the girls. I am hoping, however, that in terms of production, hindi kadiliman ang Miss Universe Philippines. In terms of musical guests, um, magkaroon sila naman ng guest na magaling kumanta. Yung tipong hindi rin ka mapapahiya na nagpe-perform siya doon sa stage. I want a very... Um, very bongacious, a very leveled up production from Miss Universe Philippines this year because the candidates that they have are very, very competitive. So it would be, you know, um, a slap on the quality of the candidates if subpar yung level of production ng MU page this year. So I do hope and I do pray that mag level up ang MU page because the candidates that they have this year is arguably for me the best set of candidates that they have um, since their inception. Okay? Um, okay, bago tayo mag-end, let's continue with some of your uh, comments kasi uh, um, I don't want to make this a very long na live stream. Ayaw kong umapot tayo ng dalawang oras. Uh, ay, alam ko, uh, tomorrow marami pa kayong mga sabi ito, mga pupuntahan, may mga lakad pa kayo. So, I, I do want that um, our live stream is not going to be difficult and too long that magpuyat uh, tayo ngayong gabi. Okay. Um, Okong Channel says, oh no, 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 no. Pasensya na, Okong. Unahin ko muna yung comment ni uh, Dominic Martin Mission kasi nauna siyang nag-post. Okay? Sabi niya, For sure, I will be team replay. My personal fave to win is Chris from Cebu um, being a proud Bisaya but I think she will give uh, it to Atisa this year. Greetings from Perth. Ayan. Um, I actually, you know, uh, I was actually thinking that Chris, because of her, you know, because of her very low-key na participation this year, I am expecting na mambubulaga siya kang prelims and finals. Um, I am expecting, you know, um, she has a game plan and that uh, she will execute that game plan, you know, very, very well come finals and uh, the come the preliminaries and finals of the competition. So, um, I'm expecting, you know, you know, highly, uh, highly from her in the competition this year. Uh, okay, balik tayo kay Okang Chana, sabi niya, Sir Jason, uh, twice po yata sumali sa Miss Intercontinental si Christy. Um, twice din siyang nag, no, actually, actually, okay. So, Christy um, was a replacement candidate ng Mutia, I think in 2011, uh, when Mutia still had the Miss Intercontinental na title back then. What happened was, um, my God, I can't remember sino yung Mutia ng Pilipinas Intercontinental. But, um, she was not able to compete. So, uh, na-appoint si Christy in 2011 to compete at Miss Intercontinental. She was, top, uh, she was top 10, top 15 during that time. The next time that she competed, uh, in Binibining Pilipinas, she was awarded the Binibining Pilipinas Intercontinental title once again. Um, the BPCI actually, you know, uh, discussed yung participation ni Christy with the uh, MIC owners at that time and pinayagan siya na siya ulit ang mag-compete. And uh, because she already competed before, alam na niya yung galaw ng pageants. So, she was, you know, she was... Um, what say, what, uh, how do you call this? She was uh, allowed to compete, and that's when she ended up as first runner-up in Miss Intercontinental in 2015. Okay? Um, na, saan na tayo? Okay, Marjun Marcelo Cristobal. Hello! Okay, uh, sabi niya, Christy and Atisa, sila ang last two standing, sabi niya. 
Um, Don Aragon Vlog says, If I want to choose over the girl with color, it should be Lorraine Ojimba. Authenticity, uh, uh, authenticity si Christy wala nun. Kahit pa, bikula na siya. Um, Judy1974 says, um, Alexi Brooks. And tinatanong din niya kung wala si, bakit wala si uh, listahan si Ms. Iloilo. Again, I, I explained this. There are only four spots that... Um, that YouTube allows in their poll, kaya hindi ko siya naisiksik doon. Okay? Uh, Marjan Cristobal, uh, sorry, Marjan, uh, Marcelo Cristobal says, Mexicans don't know what authenticity is. Pagandahan at rampahan ang labanan. So much for advocacy. Shane says even none of it. Uh, rampahan at pagandahan ang labanan. In fact, I think, um, Shane just finished her, uh, tour in Mexico City for Smile Train. So, hindi ibig sabihin na in terms of advocacy, um, wala si, uh, wala si Shainese. And in terms of advocacy, um, that's not necessarily the case na wala si Christy, Christy McGarry. In fact, she is uh, a fitness, ad, uh, she, she advocates for fitness, she advocates also for, tawag ito, for, um, ah, saan na ba yun? Okay, uh, she has a, wala lang ha, at i ano ko um, balikan ko yung uh, collective hustle na blog uh, doon sa tawag nito doon sa post nila on ano uh, on Christy okay um, okay um, Christy co-founded a lifestyle group and community called Impact and during the pandemic uh, with the lack of physical contact um, they held online workouts uh, that focused on body weight training, um, introduction to wellness and meditation and breath work, and held their um, live workouts on Rebel, the leading health and wellness uh, application and platform in the Philippines. So in terms of advocacy work, hindi ibig sabihin na dahil wala tayong nakikita, uh, walang ganun si Christy. In fact, she has. It's just not as popular or as published as you know, other candidates. Um, so, I think, klaro tayo doon. Okay? Um, so, there. Uh, I think, in terms of yung ating poll, let's go back to it. Uh, oh, okay. 33% now tell uh, is telling us that their favorite is not among the three listed ladies in uh, the tawag ito, uh, in the poll. Okay? Coming up at uh, uh, second is Atisa Manalo with 27%. Um, Crystalline McGarry is uh, at number 3 at uh, 25%. And uh, Victoria Velasquez Vincent has 15% of the votes. Ayan. So, which is good because it gives us, you know, um, rallying tally doon sa ano ba talaga ang nangyayari ngayon in terms of the fan support because earlier leading si uh, Christy tapos nasa pawa ni Atisa uh, tapos biglang ngayon uh, as we end the poll it's 33% none of the above so this you know is a reflection of what's actually going on with yung um, with the competition uh, uh, at Miss Universe Philippines nagbabago um, there are moments that this is the moment for Christy, this is the moment for Atisa, this is the moment for Alexi. And I think that is, you know, something that we've been seeing over the past several um, several days after the press presentation. Parang kanya-kanyang pasabog or kanya-kanyang um, kanya -kanyang presence, pasabog na presence on social media. And over the next several weeks and several months prior to uh, the Miss Universe Philippines finals in May, I am sure there will be other ladies who is going to be stepping up and having a lion's share on the social media presence and social media buzz um, for NUPH uh, this, you know, uh, this, this, uh, this year, uh, in this edition. Okay, so thank you very much everyone for um, joining us in our live stream. I'm not going to make this any longer anymore uh, because this is, has already been a uh, discussion that has uh, been for an hour um, kagulantang uh, ganun na pala kata tayo katagal na nagchichismisa, nagchichikahan okay, so thank you very much for everyone who uh, is, is you know, has the patience at, to uh, finish our live stream this, uh, this evening before we end, please leave a thumbs up please leave a like in our um, 
live stream so that the episode is going to be you know pushed to more people so that they can um, see our content okay um, let's grow the channel together and we're hoping that in the next uh, several months aabot na tayo doon sa target natin by the end of the year na kapag 10k tayo na uh, 10k tayo na mga followers and subscribers um, here on uh, YouTube okay so thank you very much and hope to see you again soon um, I hope na in the next na meeting natin hindi masyado mabigat yung pag-uusapan natin dahil alam ko um, there's a lot of you who are still, you know, lingering with the current um, scandals and controversies of the Miss Universe pageant. I am putting a break on that on the meantime. Uh, it's getting too heavy and too agitating. So maybe um, in the next several uh, several days on social media, I will try to post more entertaining na mga, uh, posts. Um, instead of the scandals that has been plaguing Miss Universe or, and the Miss Universe organization, okay? I am hoping na wala na muna tayong mga um, issues na mangyayari with uh, Miss Universe. Um, keeping our fingers, our fingers crossed. Um, but I do hope that for the next two months, three months, um, more lively and positive news ang um, mangyayari with our favorite pageant, okay? So, um, the next several weeks and several months, we will be talking more about the Miss Universe candidates, Miss Universe Philippines candidates, and uh, as we progress to their finals on May, um, I do hope that a lot of the girls that we've been discussing in our live stream today would step up and uh, be more competitive in the game, okay? Thank you very much for everyone who stayed tuned. Um, again, as I said, please leave a like and see you in our next live stream. Bye, everyone, and have a great weekend.